Hey there everybody, it's The Shooting Guy and thank you so much for joining us today. I do appreciate it a lot. If you are a subscriber, it's because of people like you that keep me going. If you're just swinging by and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because uh, we really enjoy having our Shooting Guy compound grow and um, it has been doing that so I do appreciate that a lot. So consider subscribing, all right? Well, recently we took a road trip to Oregon where we had an opportunity to uh, pay a visit to the Kershaw manufacturing plant up there in Tulatin. And um, the guys up there were absolutely terrific. Jim McNair was our host for the day, and boy, did we look at a lot of knives. So here in part two, we have uh, an opportunity to look at even more knives. So uh, without any further ado, here's Jim, and here are the knives. We have one of those, but tell us a little bit about all of these here. Okay, so the function series is our our take on kind of a, a, a knife-heavy sort of multi-tool concept. So it's, it's, it's a knife first and foremost, but it has some cool other options and some other things that you can do with it. So, you know, we, we have three models. We have the, what we call the Function DIY. Mm -hmm. we, we have the Function Outdoor. Mm -hmm. And we have the Function FR, or First Responder. And this mm -hmm. one you're looking at is actually a lim an exclusive version we did for Walmart. Mm -hmm. Normally it would have the Normally it would have a, the black handle with the rubber insert, but this one is a molded handle with the K-texture in it. Gotcha. So, gotcha. A little different version that, you know, you don't normally get to see right here. Yeah. I so um, so with the DIY version, we have, a, we have a bottle opener, screwdriver. We have this for the small quarter-inch bits. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually works with a little liner lock, lock mechanism in the back. So yeah. real neat little piece, locks open. Um, the obvious sort of elephant in the room on this series would be the, the carabiner, and we really wanted something that, we looked at a lot of ways of doing it and finally said, let's make it part of the design. Nice. Let's make that something that it's, it's just out there and you see it. And the neat thing about that is, you know, having it actually on the outside of the handle, you stick your thumb right in that hole, roll it right open. Easy to deploy. Mm. Right. Now, the other thing that people don't always see about this knife is there's this little pin mm -hmm. here. It's attached to that and it rolls around with it. Mm -hmm. That's funny, it actually works as a traveling stop pin. Normally your stop pin on a knife is fixed in place. So you'll have this little pin back here that right. your blade hits in the open and close position. Right. In this case, the pin actually travels with this and it serves two purposes. One, it does actually stop this when, it, when it's in the open and close position. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if you think about it, something that we've learned is with a liner lock knife, if you have a carabiner on, it's jangling around on your rack or on your gear, on your backpack somewhere, Liner locks tend to want to walk themselves open. They'll mm -hmm. sort of do 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 do. Well, so this little pin here, what it does, you can see the tip of the blade there. Right. Kind of stupid simple. It just blocks that blade, so it cannot open. You know, it's it locked really, shut. A shooting kid and I, we were uh, messing around with our the, the function that we have, and it's not documented in any of the documentation. We couldn't get the knife open with the carabiner open. We couldn't figure it out until we took a really close look and saw that. And I'm going to roll some footage of that. But it, we were just, what did we do? Did we break our knife? No, it's supposed to be that way. And which is a great design, you know, so the knife does not open up on you when you have that thing hanging. Yep, it's great. great. So, that, so that is the, uh, the do-it-yourself version. And then we also have the, uh, the outdoor version, which I believe you focused on, that has the, has the camp saw in it. All right, all right. And again, same features, same cool carabiner, same, same nice big blade. And... Uh, these also have a real nice snap to them. Oh yeah, really open with authority. Oh, oh, that came out really fast, guys. Yeah, a little on the heavy side. I think they're, we they're a little chunky. Of, they're, they're, chunky. They're a big knife, but they're not going to break on you. That was no. would be my guess, right? They're they're made no. to be pretty durable. It's just got a lot of parts in it. Yeah, right, right. Very nice. And then actually a little lighter weight. Now that we talk about it, would be this one. Mm. So this is the. Uh, so maybe we should have gone. This is the first display. first responder version. Well, yeah. this is the Walmart version. So again, yeah. this is the special version we did for Walmart. It's a little little porkier, a mm -hmm. little chunkier overall. Mm -hmm. um, again, comes with the, it comes with the uh, seat belt cutter, little screwdriver, and mm -hmm. the uh, and the uh, little hex bit thing for for when your uh, police officers and fire are on the job. Right. And then after the job, you can use this to crack open a cold one. There you go. So. <laughs> See ya. It, that's the important part right there. Yep. Everybody loves that, so <laughs> we'll, we'll save after, after we're done saving the people's <laughs> yeah, lives. Right, right. But it's, but it's nice to be able to have that seatbelt cutter in there and this little package with everything else. Um, Throw this in the center console, you know, yep. the car probably. It's useful in a lot yep. of ways like that. 
The other thing that's easy to miss is this actually has a little carbide glass breaker on yeah, it. Break the window if you needed to. So yeah. So actually, you know, we call it the first responder, but this, is, like you said, is a great thing to have in your car, in your center console, in your glove box. Sure. It can help you out of a lot of sticky situations. So. Nice. So yeah. Serrated blade. Black blade's nice. That's kind of unique. Yeah. Looks yeah. good on it. Oh, it is serrated. Oh, that's true. Yep. So this is the only one in the series with a serrated blade. Cool. Go out to Walmart and buy yourself one. All right, I'm looking at these. Now, these are domestically made, right? These are, yeah. And it's uh, unfortunately kind of a poor showing. We, uh, we're we in the business of selling these, not necessarily keeping them in my toolbox in the back. So unfortunately, I didn't have very many to show you today. But That means you're selling them. That's a good thing. That means they are selling, That's yeah. That's right on. So um, these, are a few, these are actually two, two of our, what I would call our Kershaw classics that have been very popular for many years. Um, so we'll start out with the leak. This is kind of everybody's favorite everyday carry knife. As you can see, it's made in the USA. Uh, stainless steel construction on both sides with a frame lock handle. Very, very slim. It's about, it's like 0.3 inches thick, maybe even a little less. Um, assisted opening. It's got a really nice, a nice snap to it. Very nice, yeah. This one you can see is a, is a serrated model. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just a just a real neat little piece. Um, so do you technically call that a drop point or a Warren Cliff? What do you, you know, call it? I think we would probably. I don't know if we necessarily. I, mean, I would call, almost call it a spear point, but spear it, it's point. It's, okay. it's almost a Warren Cliff. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what people like about it is it manages to not have that total flat on the bottom look mm -hmm. as a Warren Cliff normally does, but it uh, it's a really nice spot, knife for opening boxes and envelopes and those kind of things where you're just you're working like this. Yeah. And uh, people tend to really appreciate that. So this has been a knife that just continues to, to do well for us. And yeah. so we keep making them. The Blur has also been an extremely popular product for us. We've, we've made many, many thousands of these. Assisted opening, Very nice fast. broad blade. We like that. We, really, we, we focus on having a real good snap to these <laughs> knives. We want them to, want them to feel like they open with authority. So, yeah. So this this is a, obviously a desert sand black, black Beautiful. version here. What's the uh, what's the coating? Did you say that? The coating is uh, is uh, it's an it's a DLC coating, mm, so uh, okay. diamond like coating, yeah, diamond like nice. carbon, very tough. We really feel like that's the Cadillac of black finishes. Mm -hmm. So, on our USA products, they pretty much all use that finish. It looks really nice and holds up really well to use, which is usually a problem with black finishes. And again, here's another. Another one of our blurs. This is the S30V blur. Nice. Um, Stonewashed blade. That's black a handles. Handsome blade. Wow. Wait. Nice rubber inserts. Yeah. Yep. So when you say rubber, so there's a, it's grippy. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a, we like that. Yeah. Stonewashed. Yeah, that's a yeah that's a. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's the S30V version. Yeah, so we okay. get to the stonewash finish. Nice. Uh, most of the other blurs will get a bead blast or something different. Well, there you go, folks. A few more knives from that Kershaw visit that we made, and uh, this was part two. We're going to have a part three with some real special things from Kershaw that you won't want to miss. So make sure you are subscribed so you'll see when that comes out in the near future. That's all we got for today. God bless you. God bless America. May America bless God. Um, 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 um.